Welcome to the FAO Fall Armor Monitoring and Early Warning mobile app for smartphones. This video will show you how to get started and install the app, how to register as a new user, how to log in, and how to use the app itself. So first you need to save and open the APK installer file on your smartphone, then double click on that file to install the application itself. Once it's installed, then you need to change the settings in the application on your smartphone to allow access to the location and storage. So first, uh, before you can log in, you need to register as a new user. I'll click on the New User button. And you should enter a little bit of information about yourself. Your first name, your family name, a username, and your email address. In case you don't have an email address, you can enter any email address here. A password is required, and you should confirm that password. Once you've done that, you submit this information, and now you go back to the login page, and you can enter your email address and your password to log in. Now one tip, if you don't log out of the app, then you don't need to do this again. So I would suggest not to log out of the app. This is the main menu in the top left hand corner. And here you will see the three main components of the application. But before that, you should always sync the app so that you have the latest version and the latest updates. Okay, here are the three main components of the app on the main home page. And you see them also on the main menu. So if we go to the home page, here we can also change the language, in this case from English to French. And now everything is in French. For our video here, we'll go back to English. Now the three main components of the app, we have About Famous, we have Collected Data, where the data is stored in the app, and we have Start Survey, where we actually collect the data. Okay, so now we're going to start the survey, and first we have some general information to fill out. The date of the survey, and notice is today's date and today's time by default. Now if you don't like that, if you're entering previous data, then you can select the previous date from the calendar. Then you're asked to indicate what data is going to be collected. We're going to collect data on field scouting and data on pheromone traps. Next, you should indicate your location name. And notice also that when you've indicated field scouting, there's a scouting tab at the bottom, and there's also a traps tab at the bottom. And this is good for navigating uh, in the application from page to page. Should enter the latitude and longitude of the location of the survey, and we can use a GPS of the mobile device for that. It automatically gets the latitude and longitude in decimal numbers. And you can see these red asterisks are indicating that this is mandatory data. This data needs to be completed on the form. There's a question about what training or assistance you may have received. Here you can indicate uh, the different sources. It can be more than one, of course. You make a mistake, you simply click um, in the uh, X to, to remove it. And we need to indicate the main crop, so in the a long list of, uh, of crops here. So let's choose maize. If you know the variety, you can indicate the variety. This is not a mandatory field because there's no red asterisk. Indicate the planting date of the main crop, again choosing from the calendar. If it's irrigated or rain-fed, maybe you don't know. Fertilizer was used, yes, no, or unknown. What is the stage of the crop? And here are the main stages of the crop. We'll choose seedling for this example. And what is the general health of the crop of your fields? Here you can indicate medium. What farming system, if this is a seasonal crop? 
And here if it's seasonal, then we move right to the next field size. Uh, but if it's rotation or intercropping or push-pull, it will ask us then, what is that crop, the secondary crop? So here you should choose that from the crop list. We'll say alfalfa. And now we go to the size of the field and indicate this as a number. And the units, usually it's hectares, but there's uh, choices for other units. If you happen to know uh, when it rained last, you can enter this information, but it's not mandatory. Okay, in this case we know, so we're going to put the date. And when we enter the date, then it will ask for the uh, amount, an estimate of how much it may have rained. Now we can go to the next page, which will be scouting. This is a field scouting page. This allows us to enter the information when we're checking the fields for uh, our uh, pest. Normally we're checking five uh, different places, ten plants at each place. So those are the five places. And you're looking for fall armyworm, but you can also enter information about African armyworm and about borer. So the first ten plants we checked and we found four fall armyworm. The second ten plants we found nine fall armyworm. The third ten plants we found eleven fall armyworm. Sorry, not eleven, some other number. Ten uh, uh, plants checked again, didn't find any, and the last ten plants there were three fall armyworm. So here at the bottom, then you can see the total of the plants that have been checked. This is automatically calculated and automatically calculate the percent uh, that's infested by fall armyworm, African armyworm, and boar. So in addition to checking for the plants, if you happen to see any of these uh, pests, you can indicate their stage. It can be more than one, of course. And you can do that for fall armyworm and for African armyworm and for boar. Okay, that's for this scouting. Now a few questions on the damage. What is the current damage level in the field? And here you should check the young leaves and the fresh frass in the world. If you see any, then you can indicate. And if there's any previous damage, this would be on the older leaves. Then we have a question on natural enemies present. There's different types that could be present, more than one. You can indicate. If you don't know, then you can indicate unknown. And then a question on if there's dead larvae present and indicating if uh, there is none or by natural enemies or by some other uh, reason that they're dead. Finally, some information about if there's any control that's been undertaken in your field against fall armyworm. And here there's a many different control methods. You can indicate more than one. So here we have biocontrol, and cultural, and egg squashing, hand picking, and then we can delete one that we may have accidentally entered. And in the case when we enter biopesticide, it will then ask for the name of the biopesticide. This is the active ingredient, not the trade name. So you can choose from the list and how many liters of biopesticide was used in the control operation. Similarly, with chemical pesticide, it will ask us for the active ingredient uh, name of the pesticide, not the trade name, so here we can choose the active ingredient, and how many liters uh, were, was applied. Lastly, if you choose local control, there are a number of different uh, possible local controls that can be used. You can choose them from the list, as many as you want, and indicate that as the local control. 
Finally, you can add a picture or more than one picture on uh, showing damage and showing the pest itself. Now, if you hit the previous button, that will go back to the info, and the next button will take us to pheromone traps. This is the page where you enter information uh, when you're checking the, these traps. So first enter the trap unique track, trap ID. So it should be a two-letter uh, country code followed by six-digit numerical code. Where that trap is located in the field. And then indicate the number of fall armyworm that you found in the trap. The number that may have been fall armyworm, but you're not sure, and the number that are other species, not fall armyworm. Then a few questions on the, the trap and the lures. So what trap type was used? Usually it's a bucket trap. What is the name of the lure? Okay, there's a list of names, so if you know that, you can enter that. If the trap has been replaced recently, and if the lure has been replaced recently, because you know these lures need to be replaced uh, every so often. So if we say yes, the trap has been replaced, then it will ask what is the date that trap was replaced. From, choose from the calendar, the day and the month. Similarly, if the, you say yes, that the lure has been replaced, the app will ask you what is the date that that lure was replaced on. If by chance you have a second trap in your field, you can enter the same information for that second trap, just like you did for the first trap. But in our case, we only have one trap, so we will delete that with the X button there. Okay. Now at this point, you've entered all the data, so you can submit it. And it's saved to your phone and then sent when you have an internet connection. You can see that data saved on your phone in the scouting and traps. On this page, there is an overview of the data shown for each location in which you've saved data for. So here we can see the date of the survey, the data to be collected, the location name, the latitude, the longitude, when it was created. If you click on the action button, then you see the entire data that has been collected on each page in the app. So this is the general information on the info page. Then we have this field scouting information on the scouting page. And we have the trap information on the trap page. So this is all the data that's been collected. One of the most important uses of the collected data page is to confirm if the report has been sent or not. So a green tick mark indicates that the report that you have uh, made has been sent, has been transmitted, whereas a paper icon uh, indicating under the status says that your report has not been sent. So therefore you need to click the action button, you go to the report that not, has not been sent, you can see all the information that has been collected and recorded. If you go to the bottom of the page, then you click the submit button, assuming that you have cell service or an internet connection, and that report now will be sent. You can confirm that by going back to the page, and you see that the paper icon has turned to a green check mark. If we go back to the Scouting and Traps page, here you can choose what data uh, that is visible on that page. So if we turn off date of survey, for example, we don't see the date of survey anymore. Turn it back on, and we should now see it visible on this page. Again, you can also search all of your data on your mobile phone as well. So that's uh, the collection of data and the storage of data. Let's look at one last component of the mobile app, and this is about the app itself. So here we see some information about FAMOS, what it does, why we're using it. And if we go back up to the top, 
there's also some information about the fall armyworm itself. We click on that, we go to that page, the fall armyworm, and here there's information about some immediate action that can be taken, some caution, and some few facts about the fall armyworm. So this is the FAMOS app, the three sections. And remember to use this app every time that you're checking a field for fall armyworm or checking pheromone traps. Thank you very much for your attention.